Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring it down to bite sized pieces. Today, that's been interesting stuff. First up, professional investor and CNBC contributor John Najarian talks about Bitcoin. This is another story about how investors or institutional investors are right around the corner, yet we see not much of a price action. So what's going on? Also, Coinbase reportedly lands contract to provide blockchain analytics to the US Secret Service. And I actually posted this in the community section. So thanks for everybody who responded to help me streamline my thought process on this. And we're gonna dig deep into this article. And lastly, Charles Hoskinson's Cardano giveaway is a big fat scam. And if you've been following the channel for any length of time, you know we're all about scams of the day. So I'm gonna give an open letter to Charles to show him how we can all defeat this if he just helps us out. And that will lead to the scam of the day, which we'll go over at the very end of the video. But let's take a look at what's going on with the market. So today, it is July 12th. It is roughly high noon Texas time. And it looks like uh, Bitcoin's doing not too much. It's at a whopping 0.0% change over the last 24 hours and for seven days 0.9 percent so pretty stable for what people might consider an unstable currency but that's the truth ethereum look at uh, 238 so not too much action there actually nothing's really going on except for bitcoin sv for some reasons up 1.7 percent i have no idea why Binance coin 3.6 percent chain link up 10.9 percent i'd like to see that and i think six dollars and 79 cents is the all-time high for a chain link so if you invested in chain link congratulations you're doing great anything else fantastic uh not too much even uh the darling uh v chain down 1.8 percent however it is up 42 percent over the last seven days so congratulations all the v chain holders looks like things are going in the right direction just for today a little bit down but hey can't go up forever all right, let's break into today's top story. So first up, investor contributor John Najarian talks about Bitcoin. That's a good name, John Najarian. So according to his CNBC bio, if you don't know who Najarian is, he was a linebacker for the Chicago Bears. Little Nice little tidbit of information, I suppose, uh, which doesn't really do much for the financial sector. But uh, he actually became a professional options trader. He's a member of the CBOE, New York Stock Exchange, CME, and CBOT. He ended up working for 25 years as a floor trader. So uh, it's safe to say he has his foot in the water and probably the pulse on what is going on in the financial sector. In 2005, together with his brother Pete, he founded Option Monster, an option news and education firm, and Trade Monster, an online brokerage firm. In 2016, Trade Monster was sold to E-Trade for $750 million. So uh, Nigerian, uh, to me, seems like he's uh, pretty good around the whole financial uh, area and finances. So we're going to give him a pass and see what he's here to talk about. Also, he's a co-founder of Nigerian Advisors and Nigerian Family Office, which advises or trades for institutional investors and provides money management for wealthy investors. And when I saw this, we're going to get into the article. But it was interesting to note that uh, this gentleman is uh, pretty much a pro uh, when it comes to different aspects of trading and options and all those things. So when he talks about some mistakes he makes, it's actually refreshing because it goes to show you that it doesn't matter how big of a fish you are and how big the pond is, they can still screw up. And uh, that's what I like to see, actually. So anyhow, moving forward, in an interview with Anthony Pompliano, aka Pomp for episode 329, Nigerian talked about Wall Street crypto and Bitcoin in general. Here's what he said. It was pretty interesting. He says, on a monthly basis, I probably have between five and 10% of, uh, I guess, his money in digital assets. And almost all of it's in Bitcoin. Little Ethereum, mostly Bitcoin. I got a little Litecoin, a little Stellar, really I'm about Bitcoin. Great, congratulations for him. He states, I first got involved at about $300. Uh, I realized I didn't know what the hell was going on. I didn't get involved again until it was closer to 1700. So I'm not sure what he's talking about here as far as getting involved. Maybe he like uh, bought a little bit and then sold it real quick. Uh, I'm not for sure, but it looks like he probably uh, went in you know, pretty hard or harder at the $1,700 uh, mark. He says, so I missed an awful lot of that. I didn't sell, and this is the important part. I didn't sell when it got over $18,000 or $19,000. I didn't liquidate. I would have looked like a genius if I did. So I want everybody to remember that. Uh, if you're beating yourself up like my, like I did uh, when I, you know, when the top hit, it, it was it was funny. 2017, when the top of the market happened, 
and it ran up to like 18.9, 19.9, and Bitcoin almost hit at $20,000, and then it just kind of slowly came off. And I talk about this in my exit strategy. You you have to understand the the mentality. You 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 get into it and you think to yourself, okay, there's no way it's going to go back down because you know everybody's going to realize you know how great of an asset this is. And they're just going to keep foaming in forever. And it's going to be fine, and all of a sudden, it just kind of topples down. And even me, who was a you know rookie investor, uh, I you know I had to uh, keep these bags forever. Uh, I'm still yeah, on 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 the negative for some of these uh, different uh, options that I had. But the Nigerian here is a pro. I mean, even up here, which I forgot to talk about, he founded Market Rebellion, which has the aim of educating the individual investor. And that was in 2016. So, and he said he didn't, he didn't uh, get out at the top. So when all these people around you uh, in you know, YouTube or on Twitter or, or any social media platform that you go to, they're like, yeah, yeah, I sold the top and I did this and I did that. Like, did you, did you really? Because I got to tell you, I mean, as long as I've been in this in this space, it seems like everybody's a genius and everybody's a guru and everybody knows exactly what's going on and when to sell. And it's amazing when it happens after the fact. You got to remember, like when I take a look at all these articles, uh, I swear to God, half of them are like people saying, you got to get out now. And they're half are like, you got to go in heavy. And there's all these analysts and everybody knows what's going on. But then like weeks later, you'll have some some person I've never heard of or even somebody who's famous who's, you know or well known will say oh yeah I knew it the whole time I'm like did you did you really so I mean I just look at this and I'm like hey thank god someone just admits it's like hey I screwed up I you know held these bags too long and I think that's that's uh, that's what's going on so um, if you haven't watched my exit strategy it kind of takes out that um, different aspect of like uh, the FOMO and everything else because here's the thing you're going to screw up uh, you're going to make mistakes just like I did. I'm still going to make mistakes, but uh, we can minimize the mistakes that we make by having a plan of action in place now rather than everything goes a little bit crazy. So I'll link this at the very end of the video. Please uh, watch that one. It'll probably help you out a lot. Anyhow, so moving on, the Nigerian says that Wall Street players are secretly increasing their Bitcoin holdings. He says, I think a lot of them will want to keep it quiet as they're getting in because they'll run it. I don't mean they'll run in terms of how Bitcoin operates. I mean, they'll push the price too far too fast. Those same guys are sitting there thinking, I really like this play in Bitcoin, but I'm not going to say a lot about it until I've got enough of this stuff because we both know that blocks of it stand out. And so they've got to stay under the radar within or with these accumulations. Jerry is confident about the long-term future of Bitcoin. He says it hasn't hurt the dollar yet, but eventually what we're going to do is it's going to hurt the dollar and it's going to hurt my kids moving forward. And I think he's talking about here is like uh, with the quantitative easing and the Fed just printing money uh, willy-nilly doesn't really matter. Uh, what's happening is, is that uh, we are creating debt for the future generation because you can't just print money uh, out of thin air and just expect debt to not uh, be, you know, become accumulating. So that's what's happening. We're accumulating a massive amount of debt with all this money being printed. And the only way we can pay it off is in the future. And it's, I'm sorry to say, it's not going to be me. It's going to be my kids or my grandkids. And that's the ones who are going to pay the debt. That's how I think of it too. Anyhow, it says, he's, and lastly to finish up, it says it's going to hurt for years out in the future, all this printing of initial capital. And that's what I love about digital assets like Bitcoin. So first of all, let me just say this. I don't know if you're like me, but I'm tired of hearing about all these guys, all these different institutional investors who are coming in hard and heavy, but they're just accumulating the background in secret. And they're just, you know, like this mystery shadow organization. And, uh, you know, when the time hits, then all of a sudden, boom, Bitcoin's going to go through the roof. I got to tell you, I've been hearing that for years. I've been hearing that for years, and it's kind of frustrating right now. Even I get frustrated because I know where Bitcoin is going. I know where digital assets are going. Um, I know where Ethereum is going to head to. I think Cardano is going to do well. I think Chainlink. I think Tezos. I think even VeChain. I mean, I, I mean, not even VeChain. I think VeChain is going to do well. I think a lot of things are going to do very well. But when I hear about these stories like, oh, these guys are mysteries they're doing the background, I'm like, really? Is that happening? I mean, we see it, but I mean, is it like mass accumulation, like what they're talking about? And of course, these institutions, they can they can buy OTC over the counter so where it doesn't screw up all the, the prices and they can slowly accumulate. But how long is it going to last? You know, how long are they going to accumulate for like 20 years? You know, some kind of slow hand. Then all of a sudden they're going to flip the switch. It's just not how it is. I mean, I think they are accumulating, but I don't know exactly how much it is and how much this is all just smoke and mirrors. So not for sure. 
Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section. But I will say this. I believe there is a reason why these guys, why some of these guys are getting in. I think there's only so many people who can really see into the future and go, okay, I got it. This is why this is fantastic. And even like, uh, you know, people like Robert Kiyosaki, which we featured a couple of days ago, uh, the reason why he's so big into it, and it took him a long time, when he heard about the having, he's like, oh, that's what it is. Okay, so it's not just about, you know, quantitative easing and printing forever. With Bitcoin, there's a quantitative uh, hardening. And I like that aspect. I think with that, plus with what's going to happen with the central bank digital coins, with with every country coming out, China's leading the, leading the pact. They are way ahead of everybody right now. But once they, you know, once they really get it into into effect, I know it's being trialed right now over there. It's going to happen. It's just going to happen. You're going to see, you know, Europe. You're going to see Australia. You're going to see parts of the Middle East, and then finally North America. You're going to see Canada. You're going to see America. You're going to see Mexico. All these different places are going to have a central bank digital coin. And what it's going to come down to is the economic policy that is the strongest. So the problem with America right now, I can tell you, is uh, you know we print like crazy. And uh, we are in serious debt. So that's an issue. And then, uh, and then throughout the, the rest of the world, there's, they all are controlled by central banks. So the monetary policy kind of sucks. The one that doesn't suck is Bitcoin because it's just a computer code. I mean, not just a computer code, it's a great computer code, and it works out pretty well. And then uh, there is a diminishing uh, supply over time. So as time goes on, I think the actual economic policy with Bitcoin is going to win out. And I think that's what the people that can actually see in the future, like the Paul Tudor Jones, like the Anthony Pompliano, and all the different people that are well known, and they can actually see what's going to happen, like the Drapers, they're like, oh, okay, we get it. Uh, Shamath is another example. They can see what's going to happen, they know what's going to go, and they invest accordingly. So I think that's what's going to happen. Now, as time goes on, I don't think Bitcoin is the only one. I think there's a lot of different digital assets that do different things, and uh, Bitcoin can't do it all. I'm just going to tell you that seems ridiculous to me. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next story. Next up, Coinbase reportedly lands contract to provide blockchain analytics to the U.S. Secret Service. Fantastic. So what's happening here is there was a it looks like a document that was uncovered by the block and this is the deal with the United States Secret Service that will run through 2024 and it looks like action obligation 49,000 looks like it's not even for that much it's like um, I don't says 49,000 here but I think it's for 249,000 over four years or something like that at first when I saw this I'm like oh great another type of government agency that's getting out in bed with Coinbase and I was pretty negative about it but I actually posted this and uh, there were some good comments in there, but first let's uh, take a look at the article. So crypto entrepreneur Mike Duda said this, it's one thing to respond to government subpoenas. It's another thing to actively market blockchain surveillance technology to the government. This feels very icky. And that's kind of how I thought too. I'm like, well, you know, if Coinbase is going to go to the IRS, they're going to go to the DEA. Now they're going to go to the Secret Service. Where does it all stop? So we'll get into that in a second. But Coinbase said, they state that this contract will not lead to a breach of privacy for Coinbase users. When I first read that, I'm like, okay, that's BS because Facebook told us the same thing. Remember when Facebook, when you first got on Facebook, they're like, well, oh, never sell your data. You're safe with us. There's no problems. And all of a sudden, where's all my data? What happened to you know, Cambridge Analytics? They have all this information on me. And then like you, you go into Facebook and you, t and you check on one different thing and you got ads up the wazoo for years. So if they, if you think, ah, Facebook wouldn't do that, of course they do. And then Coinbase, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, well, man, this is the deal, same deal. Anyhow, they go on to state that they ensure that the information offered in Coinbase Analytics has always been kept completely separate from Coinbase internal data. They go on to state this. Coinbase Analytics data is fully sourced from online, publicly available data, and that does not include any personally identifiable information for anyone, regardless of whether or not they use Coinbase. Coinbase Analytics is a blockchain analytics product that we use internally for compliance and global investigations. It's an important tool to meet our regulatory requirements and protect our customers' funds. We developed Coinbase Analytics with technology from the Neutrino acquisition. So let's take a look at what everybody else said. And I posted this uh, actually in the community section, which comes out on YouTube, which is pretty cool. And I said, hey, is this good for mass adoption or just more mass surveillance? What do you think? And I thought I was going to get an overwhelming avalanche of people saying, ah, oh, this is ridiculous. I can't believe they're doing this to us. And they're, they're stealing our data. But uh, that wasn't it. It was like half and half. 
Uh, so Bike Bowling says, isn't this just block blockchain data? The only reason Coinbase is doing it is because the government can't figure out how to analyze public blockchains on their own. And that's true because that's what they're also doing with the IRS. IRS sent an open letter to all the different uh, tax security software and said, hey, we need help with uh, figuring all this stuff out. And uh, some responded, some didn't. Webnet Marketing says, deep down, I think this will help us all. Keep your enemies close. I have to agree with that one. Joe says, glad I stopped using him. Blue Collar is on the other side. He goes, hey, mainstream company in crypto is basically the biggest enemy of crypto's founding philosophy. And then, which is kind of like the same sentiment for a little bit. And then, oh, yes, is almost every exchange does it. And I got to agree. That's probably the truth. They probably all are cooperating in some way, shape or form. But I don't know if it's to this level. You know, I, I just don't know. And then a lot of people say that they have switched and whatever else. So when I look at all the different factors together, and I and I, I read what you guys say, I read what you, you know everybody says, and, and I take a look at it, and I go, you know, in all honesty, we're being tracked. If you've ever watched that that movie Snowden, I mean, we're being tracked all over the place uh, because of different laws that were enacted after 9-11. And it's just the truth. So that is just the reality of the situation that we have right now. And um, that's one of the things about Bitcoin. It's an open source. It is decentralized. And uh, you can see a lot of different data that it's out there. So I look at it and I go, okay, if I have to make a choice between mass adoption and I want to be totally private, I'm going to go with mass adoption. Am I going to you know, say, well, this is the greatest thing of all time? No. And I'm going to tell you why. Because you can make a choice. You can totally make a choice right now. If you want to use Coinbase, you can use Coinbase. It's, it's super simple to use. And especially if you're new to this, this uh, you know, cryptocurrency digital assets, you should probably use Coinbase. It's super simple. Coinbase Pro is a little bit uh, more complex. Not more, not super complex, but I mean, the fees are at least lower. So if you want to go that route, sure. However, I've always thought to myself that if I want to go and use a product uh, I'm voting with my pocketbook. So when I, for years, I've only used Coinbase, and then uh, once I started to do this channel, I realized, wow, there's a lot more options out there, a lot better, a lot of, lot better options out there, especially with what everybody has told me in the comments section. And uh, I have to say that uh, these days I don't use Coinbase. I will, I still have an active account there, but I will only use it for off uh, and, and off ramp during during my exit strategy. So I will say this: by Coinbase. You know, partnering up with the government and these agencies, it's going to lend itself to more credibility and it's going to lead to more mass adoption. And also it talks about here that uh, Coinbase is also rumored to be considering going public with an IPO, which, you know, that's the biggest duh comment. You know, of course, they're going to do it. And uh, once they go public, it's going to help people realize like, whoa, what? There's, there's an exchange for what? And it, it does Bitcoin. I remember Bitcoin. I heard about that, you know, years ago. And then it's at what now? And then we can buy that. And then that, that's how much that Coinbase company makes. That's amazing. I got Maybe I should look into this cryptocurrency. And before you know it, people are going to Coinbase and they're signing up for it. And they're paying those ridiculous fees. <laughs> and they're just you know buying uh, stuff up like crazy. And that's fine because that's kind of like <clears throat> the painful process when you first get your feet wet. You know, you got to be baptized by fire. Maybe that's just the fire of Coinbase. It's just, you know, paying all those fees and going through all those outages that they do, even though they're an $8 billion company, which never I never understood myself. So as time goes on, maybe they'll realize, hey, you know, they FOMO in and then maybe they find, I don't know, this channel or a couple different channels that are great. And they figure out, hey, I can, you know, get this someplace else for a cheaper cost and it's better and it's more secure and blah, blah, blah. So I think, Hey, great. If, if Coinbase wants to do this, they want to do an, EP, an IPO and it brings everybody in, I am totally on, I'm, I'm good with that. But uh, for me right here, I'm not going to use Coinbase uh, anymore, only for an off ramp. If you want to take a look at what I have used or am using uh, in the description of every one of my videos, there's going to be a link. It's going to look like this. And when you click on that link, it's got all the different ones that I have used or I'm using right now as far as exchanges and wallets. And it breaks them down to, I mean, everything you want to know as far as like uh, the fees, selling fees, conversions from, uh, you know, if you're going Bitcoin to Ethereum or Bitcoin to tomato coin or whatever, uh, staking fees, funding accounts, all that stuff, withdrawal fees, and then extras, which I will say this, uh, Coinbase and Coinbase Pro, I will only use them for uh, an off ramp. Gemini I've been using pretty heavily. Uh, uh, now I'm not using them. I'm actually using, I have a, my favorite one-two punch now is Voyager wallet to buy crypto. 
because it is commission free. I mean, they do make a little bit of money on the spread. I don't care. Good for them. And then for, I'm also using the uh, Celsius, which is like a, you know, CFI, they call it CFI, DeFi wallet, where whatever you store in there, it doesn't matter what it is essentially, is that you store it on their wallet and they pay you a uh, pretty good APR. That's what I've been using right now. And even I actually just today, let me scroll down here under Celsius and Voyage, if you scroll all the way down, here's the actual accrued interest on a balance. So for Celsius, I've got everything listed from Bitcoin all the way to, to Tether Gold. And you can see right here on the Celsius wallet, the interest rates, which I mean, that's pretty good. And you don't have to have a minimum. There's no holding times, there's whatever's on there. It's fantastic. And then Voyager also does uh, interest on the amount that you hold, but you have to have a minimum. And the interest rate is uh, lower in most cases, I, I, should, I should think in every case, uh, as opposed to Celsius. So that's my favorite one-two punch right now, but you can use whatever you want to. The only problem with Voyager, it's it's only available in the US right now on all in 49 states if you're in new york sorry you got sucker punched again because new york has that stupid bit license and they're still applying for it uh celsius i believe has more uh range and areas but the problem with celsius is that to buy crypto on their wallet it's like zero percent for them but then they have a partner which charges like 3.5 percent so if you want to do that it's, it's up to you but uh, then I've also got Uphold and Abra and everything else. And you will notice here that there are affiliate links. You don't have to use my affiliate links. You can go right to them. That's fine. But if you use my affiliate links, you get $10 usually in Bitcoin, actually 25 for Celsius and Voyager. Uh, so if you want to use that, go right ahead. And that's it. So let's go on to our last story. So last up, uh, Charles Hoskinson's Cardano giveaway is a big fat scam. Look at this young kid. Who's this guy? Charles. All right, so IOHK CEO Charles Hoskinson has raised the alarm about yet another giveaway scam that is making rounds on YouTube. And it says, it's kind of my attention that a scam has been floating around. Using my conference keynote to promote a giveaway, this is a scam. Please report it to YouTube. We will take legal action, if we can, against these those responsible. And uh, you know who's responsible for this? YouTube. Anyhow, scammers are running a now-removed YouTube live stream to trick viewers into sending them Cardano. Yeah, it's the same thing. I mean, we've seen these time and time again. Everybody here on my channel has seen it. And it's really, it's an annoyance. Uh, it's, it's a problem. Like, I've gotten emails from, like, uh, this guy named, or person, Shay So Heavy. This is what comes up before a video or, in, or, or an in-stream ad during a cryptocurrency YouTube different video. So, same thing. Like, this is just getting uh, popped up. And that's a problem. But then there's also right here, like see where it says skip ads? So this isn't in the feed, this is an actual ad. So like I do ads for my businesses. I use uh, Facebook and YouTube and uh, Twitter. Nah, not so much Twitter, uh, Instagram. And I can just tell you that it's a process to go through it. I mean, you have to get approved for ads. Uh, even like even like my, my YouTube channel, when I first started it, uh, they didn't, I tried to run ads uh, run my YouTube videos and they wouldn't let me because uh, there was like some kind of problem with cryptocurrency so I don't know how the heck this is happening it just it boggles my mind so um, these scammers are paying YouTube YouTube is taking the money and that's that there's also ones like this uh, this is from another ad yeah airdrop Vitalik um, another one here same deal skip ads so this isn't like a like a one-off this is like a more of a big type of thing and it's it's huge and i've just it's like every day i i get you know three four emails about hey this is going on hey this is going on during your your video or hey this is going on before your video you know are you connected with it i'm like hey i don't have any pro i don't have any connection to this youtube <laughs> youtube does their thing they put it before i have nothing to do with it anyhow the prop the, the concerning part here is this is that people say well who would fall for that well, who would fall for that? Uh, lots of people. So according to cybersecurity firm Adaptive, uh, they manage, like these fraudsters, these uh, scammers, managed to rake in more than $2 million by promoting numerous vanity addresses with the help of hijacked YouTube accounts. And I can tell you, I've done polls myself. And I had over 800 people respond. And out of those 800 people that said, you know, I asked, did you get scammed ever in the last, you know, five years? 40% said yes. 40%. So that means that those people that have gone onto these videos who have worked very hard for their money, uh, done it honestly and legally, they go and they buy cryptocurrency. They're probably new to a little bit and like they hear this little thing like, oh, I can put in, I get in, you know, 0 0.2. If I, if I, if I give you 0 0.1, that's fantastic. This is great cryptocurrency. And they lose it all because they're just, 
I'm, it's just a pain. It's just it's just awful to see. And uh, that's why we do scam of the day. Anyhow, a similar sham that involved Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates also pocketed a cool hundred thousand. So if you think this is like it's it's a funny thing, like no one fall for it. People fall for it all the time. People fall for it all the time. They're not as savvy as you might be. So um, that's why we have to protect the people that are in here. Because guess what? I think this year and next year is going to be huge, and we can't have people getting screwed out of their money. Uh, because one person tells 10, 10 tells a thousand. So, you know, Charles talks about like, hey, you know, we're gonna we're gonna go against these scammers. Well, that's great. If you want to do that, Charles, go right ahead. Uh, that's one person, and you can go over. You can go over ten of them. You know, it doesn't. And you know, you you can reach out, and I don't know what country they're in, uh, but good luck. But really, what it comes down to is that if you want to go for the hydra, you can't go for the heads of the hydra. You have to go for the body, and the body unfortunately, is YouTube. And uh, that's why Brad Garlinghouse of uh, Ripple, the CEO, said, hey, you got to stop screwing around. And they sued YouTube. They said, you cannot keep using my likeness or having these scammers use my likeness because they're so obvious. That's your job is to protect your community. You're doing a poor job. And people are getting screwed out of millions and millions of dollars. So, uh, Charles, if you're watching, which uh, who knows, you might be, the open letter is this. Uh, you can't go for one and one. You know, let us do that. What I need you to do is I need you to go after the body, and that only happens if you go after the big Kahuna, which is YouTube, and say, "Hey, if you don't stop doing this, we're gonna go legally against you, and just like Ripple, and I'm just the start." Then you're gonna feel more of a tsunami when different businesses and organizations, because what's gonna happen with like I don't know, Bill Gates gets involved and go, hey, you screwing people out of money? Well, I can't have that. Elon Musk gets involved. Hey, I can't have that. CZ Binance gets involved, and it just becomes this huge lawsuit. Do you think they want that? Are you out of your mind? But it just takes a couple of people to get involved. Ripple's the first. Charles A I O H K Cardano. Hope you're the second. All right, so that's it for today's video. Uh, I want to say thanks for sticking with me. If you got time, I'd really appreciate it if you just stick with me to Scam of the Day because that helps out a lot. So Scam of the Day, if you don't know, in the description of every one of my videos, there's going to be a link that looks like this. And what we do, try to do is get as many removed as we can. We started this in January. been pretty successful. I get a lot of different ones removed. There's a stubborn one that keeps coming around. And I got to tell you this. Um, uh, when I find these these scams, I mean, people send them to me, which is great, but they've been coming up in my feed. And what I've been doing lately is I've just been um, sharing the videos in the community. And when I do that, I, I just say, hey, this is a scam. Help me, help me download it. Within like an hour, uh, everybody attacks it and it gets taken down. So I want to say I appreciate that. So that happened uh, 16 hours ago. And then there was a couple days ago. When it was like I had uh, one, two, what's the other one? Three, four. I had four in like one day. So that that really helped out when you you and everybody else uh, actually you know reports these videos. So I will make mention of this. See how it says this visit is this video isn't publicly available. What they're doing is YouTube isn't fast enough to shut down the whole account. What they're doing is they're transferring it from uh, public to private and that way that YouTube can't see I guess they can't see the video I, I don't I, I think they have the power to do that I'm but I'm just guessing um, so these scammers are at least they're shut down at least you know so they could turn this video back on I'm not sure if they removed it or not but at least it's not around so that's a good thing right so moving forward I mean we can do scam of the day but if I ever see them in my feed I'm just gonna post in the community you guys can do your job if you have time I really appreciate it just to downvote and report it as a as a scam so how do we do that well if we're looking at the scam of the day this is the one that keeps around this Twitter stupid interview thing so if I'm gonna click on that you'll notice that there's only 370 views but the ones that I actually reported they had like 17,000 views something crazy like that so when we take a look at this we're, we have to say to ourselves first we have to think to ourselves okay well, we can't trust Rob from Digital Asset News because he might just be a liar and a cheat, and maybe he just just uh, you know is a hater of uh, tweeting Jack, whoever that is. So maybe he wants to get rid of it. So we have to do our own diligence, right? So we have to take a look at this first. What we do is we look in the actual comments, and 
this is a scam, this is a scam. A lot of people think it's a scam. All right, well, maybe they're just crazy, who knows? So what we're also looking for is, is this an asymmetrical giveaway? Meaning, if I uh, are, am actually going to have to give Bitcoin to somebody, uh, I don't know why I would do that, but um, what are what am I getting back? Well, if you see here, it says, please send Bitcoin to Bitcoin address below. Any money sent will be doubled. So if you send win one Bitcoin, you're going to get two. If you send uh, 0 0.1, you're going to get 0 0.2, right? If you think that is awesome, uh, it's not because it doesn't exist. So uh, you're not special. Uh, no one likes you that much. I don't even think your mom would send you two Bitcoin for one Bitcoin. So get that through your head and, uh, you know, your life will be a lot easier. So if we realize that, then we say, okay, this is definitely a scam. No one's sending me free money and that's it. So what do I do? Well, I downvote it. I click on there and then there's these three dots, always three dots. Click on those three dots. I'm going to report this and I'm going to say, okay, what is this? Is this a captions issue? Spam or misleading? Yes, it's spam or misleading. I'm going to choose one, scams and fraud. I'm going to click next. I say, hey, this is a scam. And then you can put whatever you want to. I will just say this, try to be respectful. Don't use curse words because YouTube, I, I'm pretty sure they're like, uh, this is just some crazy person. So just say, hey, it's a scam and tell them why. And that's it. So that's the big deal. If you could do that, I really appreciate it. So lastly, I will say this. Thanks to everybody who has been my supporters. As far as joining, uh, you don't get anything special. You just get me saying, hey, thanks. So <laughs> level one, thanks. Level two, we're just going to do random shout outs. Uh, all rights off, when mullet, uh, Grant Sharman. Going forward, I got uh, Baking Benjamins and Troc LLC. Thank you. And last page, no, no, I don't want page back. Matt Slack, uh, Andrew Herrera, Kel Show, uh, EOS UK, AE, and Hero Soap Company, and Terry Prospery. Thank you for alerting me to this scam, which is someone sending out an email that says uh, Dan Digital Asset New at Gmail. That's not my email. It's Dan Digital Asset News at Gmail.com. So if you get anything from Dan Digital Asset New, just tell him he's a scammer and a piece of trash. And that's it. So uh, just so you know, level two, I used to charge more. Uh, for that and I would give individual shout outs but a couple of days ago I deprecated that and just thought to myself uh, people should, should probably just invest uh, in more uh, cryptocurrency they don't need to pay me nothing so just do that I think everybody's happy and then we can spend more time on things we need to spend on you know like uh, scams and reviewing different uh, exchanges and things that actually help you people and uh, that's it so thanks so much for sticking around appreciate it see you on the next one